In this video, I'll analyze the pronunciation of a subscriber. The person who submitted this recording has requested to remain anonymous, but he's provided this background information. He's a self-guided learner who's never taken any formal Spanish classes. He started working on Spanish around a year and a half ago. He watches Spanish content with subtitles on Netflix and YouTube, looking up words and phrases. He texts in Spanish with his friends, and he watches my YouTube channel. Let's begin by listening to his entire recording. Listen carefully and make your own evaluation. Then afterward, I'll share my thoughts. Fue en este momento cuando ocurrió la primera cosa de todas, la cosa bastante rara que luego dio lugar a las otras cosas mucho más raras que le sucedieron. Porque de pronto, justo a sus espaldas, James oyó un movimiento de hojas y al volverse vio a un anciano vestido con un extraño traje de color verde oscuro que salía de entre los arbustos. Era un hombre de pequeña estatura, pero tenía una enorme cabeza calva y la cara casi oculta tras unas pobladas patillas negras. Se paró a unos metros y se quedó mirando seriamente a James apoyado en su bastón. Cuando habló, su voz era lenta y chileante. Acércate a mi pequeño, dijo, señalando a James con el dedo. Ven aquí y te enseñaré algo maravilloso. James estaba demasiado asustado como para moverse. El anciano avanzó, cojeando un par de pasos, y entonces metió una mano en el bolsillo de la jaqueta y sacó una bolsita de papel blanco. ¿Ves esto? susurró, balanceando suavemente la bolsita ante los ojos de James. ¿Sabes lo que es esto, hijo? ¿Sabes lo que hay dentro de esta bolsita? Entonces se acercó otro poco, se inclinó hacia adelante y aproximó tanto su cara a la de James que éste pudo notar su respiración en las mejillas. La respiración del anciano olía a moho viejo y azarado, igual que el aire de una bodega subterránea. Echa una mirada, hijo, dijo, abriendo la bolsa y enseñándosela a James. En su interior, James vio un montón de cositas verdes que parecían piedrecitas o cristales del tamaño de un grano de arroz. Eran increíblemente hermosas y tenían un extraño brillo, una especie de cualidad luminosa que las hacía destear y relucir de una forma maravillosa. «Escúchalas», susurró el anciano, «escucha cómo se mueven». James miró en el interior de la bolsa y pudo comprobar que se notaba un débil murmullo, y también notó que aquí las miles de cositas verdes se movían lenta, muy, muy lentamente, subiéndose unas encima de otras como si estuvieran vivas. Hay más poder y magia en estas cositas de aquí que en todo el resto del mundo, dijo el anciano con voz suave. Pero, pero, ¿qué son? murmuró James, encontrando por fin su voz. ¿De dónde vienen? Ajá, susurró el anciano, ni te lo imaginas. Se agachó un poco más y acercó la cara a la de James, tanto que su nariz rozaba la frente de este. De pronto dio un salto hacia atrás y empezó a blandir su bastón por encima de la cabeza. Lenguas de cocodrilo, gritó. Mil largas y viscosas lenguas de cocodrilo cocidas en el cráneo de una bruja muerta. Durante veinte días y veinte noches, con los ojos de un lagarto, se añaden los dedos de un mono joven, el buche de un cerdo, 
el pico de un loro verde, el jugo de un puerco espín y tres cucharadas de azúcar. Se cuece todo durante otra semana y se deja que la luna haga el resto. Sin más ceremonias, puso la blanca bolsita de papel en la mano de James y dijo, Ten, sujétala, es para ti. Cuando tenía trece años, fui a un campamento de verano. Todos vivían en cabañas en el bosque. Un día iba caminando con mi amigo desde el campo de béisbol hasta nuestra cabaña. Tomamos un atajo por el bosque. De repente, vimos un gran oso negro casi a unos treinta metros de nosotros. Nos dimos la vuelta para correr, pero mi amigo era corpulento y no podía correr tan rápido como yo. Él gritó, no me dejes atrás. Corrimos y corrimos y cuando miramos hacia atrás, el oso había desaparecido. Cuando volvimos a nuestras cabañas, les contamos a nuestros consejeros lo que había pasado. Más tarde, un hombre que trabajaba en el campamento fue al bosque con una pistola para cazar al oso, pero nunca lo encontró y nadie volvió a ver al oso. All right, now I'll give my analysis. To start out with, I have to say that I'm really impressed. This is outstanding pronunciation for someone who's entirely self-taught. Congratulations. Let me detail some things I think you did extremely well. Things that surprised me how well you did them. Vowels. Overall, your vowels were quite good. There were mistakes with vowels, but with two minor exceptions, I don't think they constituted a regular pattern. They were mostly mistakes that would be expected to iron themselves out over time as your fluency improves. Your vowels were best in words that didn't have close English cognates, but less accurate in words that closely resembled a familiar English word. Still, overall your vowels were surprisingly good. The T sound. In Spanish, T is pronounced with the tongue on the back of the front teeth. In English, T is pronounced with the tongue on the alveolar ridge. So English speakers tend to pronounce these words like momento, bastante, pronto and oculta. But you pronounce them more like momento, bastante, pronto, oculta, which is much more accurate. Most of the time you did a great job pronouncing T with your tongue touching the back of the teeth. You weren't perfectly consistent in this. You pronounced some T's like we do in English, but I think you pronounced most of them accurately, and this is a big deal. The velar fricative. You pronounced the letter J quite well in words like ojos, joven, and Dijo. English speakers tend to pronounce the J like an English H, and so pronounce these words like ojos, joven, and dijo. The way you did it is much more accurate for most dialects of Spanish. Now let's discuss some things that could be improved. Spanish D. The way you pronounce your Ds is maybe the strongest and most obvious feature of your foreign accent. Spanish D and English D are pronounced very differently from one another. In most phonetic contexts, Spanish D is pronounced like an interdental fricative or approximant, like the voice TH sound in English words like clothing and weather. Th, th, th. In very limited contexts, Spanish D is pronounced as a dental stop. Th, th, th. Spanish D is never pronounced with the tongue on the alveolar ridge as it is in English, and it's never pronounced as an alveolar tap, like in the English words yada, coda, gaudy, and adding. You pronounced virtually all of your Ds the English way, so words like these that should be pronounced todas, vestido, bodega, and poder, you pronounced more like todas, vestido, bodega, and poder. This mispronunciation is a pretty big deal, because Spanish has a sound very similar to the English alveolar tap, but Spanish assigns that sound to the letter R between vowels. So when you say, todas, vestido, bodega, and poder, with an English D, to a Spanish ear it sounds a lot like, todas, vestido, bodega, and poder. 
which to a Spanish speaker unaccustomed to English accents might create difficulties in understanding. Trildar. At this stage in your progress, you don't seem able to pronounce Trildar. In most places, you pronounce Trildar something like a simple tapdar, and in other places, you pronounce it like an English R. This is very understandable. Of all the sounds in the Spanish language, this is the one that's most different from any English sound, and English speakers sometimes take a while to learn it. Tapped R. You also seem to have difficulty articulating simple tapped R in words like otras, traje, entre, and hombre, and even pero, paro, and miro. The way you attempt to pronounce this sound makes it fairly obvious that you don't understand what sound you're supposed to be making here. It isn't that your mouth is incapable of producing the sound. I know your mouth is capable of producing the sound because we have nearly exactly this same sound in English. We just associate it with a different letter. Your problem, and I'm pretty much 100% sure of this, is that you think that simple tapped R is one sound, when in reality it's a different sound. Double L and Y In almost all dialects of Spanish, double L and Y are normally pronounced as some kind of fricative or approximate consonant, either Z or Y or something similar. Native English speakers have a tendency to pronounce them like the English letter Y, or even like Yod at the beginning of a diphthong. So in most Spanish dialects, these words are pronounced something like Oyo, patillas, maravilloso, and aquellas. Or even Oyo, patillas, maravilloso, and aquellas. While English speakers tend to pronounce them more like Oyo, patillas, maravilloso, and aquellas. In your sample, you pronounced most of your double L's and Y's very vowel-like, and in some words you left double L silent. In other words, you didn't pronounce it at all. Spanish V In Spanish, the letter V is pronounced exactly the same as the letter B, so these words would be pronounced like movimiento, volverse, avanzó, y mueven. Of course, English speakers see the written letter V and they want to pronounce it the way we do in English. Movimiento, volverse, avanzó, and mueven. In this recording, you pretty consistently pronounced Spanish V like English V. All right, I think these were the most notable areas of potential improvement. So now that you know, what steps can you take to improve? First is to understand how to correctly pronounce each of these sounds. I have a whole video on pronunciation of Spanish D. Watch it, think about it, and understand that as I talk about how English D differs from Spanish D, I'm talking about your D. The internet is full of advice about trilled R. I have several videos where I talk about trilled R, how to pronounce it, how it compares to simple tapped R, in what phonetic context it may appear, and so forth. I've recently become aware that lots of people struggle with simple tapped R, and I've decided to make a whole video on this topic. That video should come out within a week of this video. Keep your eyes open for it. I really think it will help you. I have a whole video on double L and Y. I recommend that you watch it and ignore the part where I explain that some dialects pronounce these letters much like English Y. Focus on the parts where I explain that most dialects pronounce them with more consonant quality. When English speakers hear that some dialects of Spanish pronounce double L and Y much like English Y, they thank the heavens that they don't have to learn a new sound, and they use an ordinary English Y sound whenever double L or Y appear in a Spanish word. Here's the thing. There is no dialect of Spanish that pronounces double L and Y as weakly as we pronounce Y in English. Even those dialects that pronounce double L and Y the most weakly don't say maravilloso and aqueas. Your Spanish will sound much more authentic if you learn to consistently pronounce double L and Y as a voiced palatal approximant, as I explain in that video. Watch my most recent video on Spanish V and come to understand that it's pronounced just like Spanish B. And the second step is to practice and drill these sounds. You can print up lists of words with difficult sounds and just practice saying them. One of the best things you can do is read aloud. Buy the Spanish translation of a book like James and the Giant Peach and read the whole thing to yourself out loud, practicing all of the things we've talked about here. You can also record yourself reading aloud and analyze your own pronunciation, listening for the things I've talked about in this video. All right, now I'm going to estimate a numerical score for your pronunciation based on the scale that I've discussed in previous videos. People who participate in this project can elect not to receive a numerical estimate, but you've asked for one, so I'll go ahead and do that now. Okay. First of all, this definitely doesn't apply to you, because you pronounce some sounds with accurate Spanish phonetics. But this doesn't apply to you, because at this stage of your progress, you don't yet organize your sounds according to Spanish rules of phonology. I think this description actually fits your pronunciation pretty well. Articulate some Spanish sounds correctly, does not use correct Spanish phonology. 
Now, this might not be quite generous enough, because while there are several important basic Spanish sounds you do not yet pronounce accurately, there are actually many Spanish sounds you do pronounce accurately. So a better description might be, articulates many Spanish sounds correctly, does not use correct Spanish phonology. I don't yet feel that you're at a level 4, though. I think you'd need a bit more accuracy in important sounds like ours. So I think a good estimate of your pronunciation would be 3, ready to move up to 4 once you've improved a couple more of your fundamental sounds. All right. I want to thank you, anonymous subscriber, for collaborating with me in this video. I sincerely hope you learned something from it. You're doing great, and I'd love to hear what your Spanish pronunciation sounds like in the future. This is the conclusion of today's video. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. I'll be evaluating the Spanish of more subscribers in the near future.